there's this exercise that you say when you look at other people and you say, uh, I think it's, is it that Just could, like me. Just like me, yeah. I've taken it to, that could be me. You know, we've all used the phrase there, but for the grace of God. That's right. But That's I love this way. idea of when you see something going on with another person, and even if you're just stuck in traffic and you're getting upset with them, you do the just like me exercise. Can That's you right. share that? <laughs> I like that. Well, it, it's really helpful. You can do it anytime. Like for instance, um, uh, sitting and waiting, you know, for anything, you can just look around at people and, and um, whether they seem stressed or happy or whatever, you can say, just like me, you know, we are alike. Just like me, that person really wants to be loved. That person doesn't want to suffer. That person doesn't want physical pain. That person doesn't want hatred coming towards them. Right, just like that me. That person, just like me, just like me. And but so it's very, very useful if like you're in these irritating situations like a traffic jam. It's so- Or at the it, airport, people or, get so frustrated at the airport. Oh, I know. So you sit there and you, you just start, instead of fuming, which gets you nowhere except, you know- More fuming. You're more fuming. You start looking at the people in the other cars or of other people sitting in the airport, I think. And just like me, these people had some place to go and they're being delayed. And just like me, they're fretting about it. And just like me, you know, they're just human beings who- Want to be where they are trying to get and, to. And, and, and just like me, it would really be helpful if there was some other way they could deal with it, you know? Yes. Uh, so, so here's some advice. You know, yes. the advice would be just start seeing the humanity of all the people in the cars around you. Know, you know, I would have to say that one of the things, the great lessons of having a talk show every day for 25 years and interviewing over 37,000 people one-on-one, -on -one, <laughs> I got that just like me thing. I understood oh, I that, that, this human, that there's this human um, common denominator yeah. of our experience. Oh, absolutely. And just like me, everybody wants to be heard. And just like me, everybody wants to know that they matter. That's right. Yeah. You know, I often say to people who are having trouble with their parents, and, um, you know, often their parents are like my yes. age, right? Yes. <laughs> and, but, you know, they, they like are going to go home and they're dreading it. And now I said, well, I got advice once enter into their lives instead of struggling against and being resentful that they're not interested in your life, just for that, keep the visit short, mm -hmm. and for a couple of days there, yeah. just sit and, and enter into their life. Do whatever they're doing, like watching television all day long when yeah. you'd rather be out playing tennis or something. But, and the other thing is, ask them about their childhood. Yes. Ask them about their life. Yes. And I said, really, it's worth taking a tape recorder because for you to start hearing about your mother or father's yeah. childhood is... Uh, yeah, I did that with my else. mother toward the end. I actually, when my mother, we knew that my mother was dying and wouldn't be on earth much longer and was making her transition. I went back to Milwaukee and I sat in the room, she was in this little room where she watches television, where the temperature was like 87 degrees and she's watching the bold and the beautiful and the young and the restless <laughs> all day long and watching the game show. And I just sat in the room. Yeah. Just sat That's in right. the room. That's right. and, and sometimes it's enough just to be there. That's right. Yeah. And I had an interesting experience once with my mother because she, she retired, she and my father retired to Mexico. Mm -hmm. But then uh, he died, oh, maybe six years before she left Mexico. And, um, so I would go down there, you know, I'd be just dying to get out and mm -hmm. walk in the markets and everything. She would stay in her room, all the shades drawn, and again, just watching television. Like, she wasn't in Mexico, even, right. you know? Could have been anywhere. And so my, my feeling was, so I got this advice, just enter her world. So I went, and I guess you say, it was so hot in there, it was so dark. Yeah. So I'm sitting there, and basically I am just so restless and just almost have to tie myself down to just kind of be present mm -hmm. because I want to get out. And after a while, I just started to relax. And after a while, it got kind of interesting, actually. Uh, every once in a while, the door would open and someone would come in and it'd be like a little vignette mm -hmm. of life. Someone would interact with her or bring her something or something. And I'd see her reaction, that person's reaction, then they'd leave and we'd be back to the sort of status quo of, boredom but mm -hmm. but after a while it became like being in a theater show or something mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. being on stage 
and uh, almost like a theater piece. I don't know what to say except that it changed from being dreadful and something I wanted to avoid to something I actually got into. That's it with right. Her. You you became present enough to actually transcend my yes, my, my resistance.